So with that being said, Star Wars Episode Nine. There's been quite a few trailers released. I say what three trailers released? A whole bunch of rumors, speculation, um, and of course the long nostalgic uh, longing for everybody to go to theaters to watch this specific uh, movie. Um, Alex, do you want to do you want to give us your thoughts first, or would you like me to just kind of ramble on for a second? You may want to go ahead because I'm not too excited about the movie, so. Oh boy. Okay. So <laughs> with that being said, the rise of Skywalker, this is the final trailer release that they have. Of course we have some release date stuff like that. Now, um, a lot of this actually, I've been very surprised with, um, exactly how I actually thought it, it, it's, this it seems as though they've started to fix some of their issues from the past that they had had, or at least that I had had with the movie. Um, a lot of the older movies, right? Like we all know that the second one wasn't quite as good as we really thought it was going to be. But this one here, it looks like now, if you go back, actually it looks like Leia's helmet from the original, uh, the, one of the, what is that? New hope? I think it was. Uh, yeah. So they were little, on Endor. Yep. So is she working with Leia? I don't, I don't know. I don't know what she's doing. I don't know why she has the helmet. Why is she just drop it and leave it on the forest floor? I couldn't tell you. Um, and then, you know, moving forward, of course you have, uh, Finn, who's just yelling, yelling for Ray, but trying to find a specific scene here, there was, so it looks like a lot more battles. And one thing that I thought was kind of cool is if you watch this here, um, it actually, her, her lightsaber, it actually kind of flickers. And a lot of people have been making a big deal about this. Like, like Kylo's does in, you know, like his, he has got the, the broken lightsaber kind of thing, but uh, me personally, that just looks like the water hitting lightsaber. That's it mists a little bit. Looks like that's actually what would happen. So well, don't forget the lightsaber was broken in half in the Last Jedi. True, true. But their CGI effects here look to have been uh, taking up a notch, trying to give you more of a visual of what it's actually like to be in this. And then, of course, just before this, or maybe it's just after this, you have uh, Kylo Ren who comes in. And actually, you know, looks like oh, we're gonna come in and do, it. we're gonna come in and fight. They're gonna be a big battle. And now, this is actually one thing I wanted to ask you, Dad. So here, there's been a big argument. They people are asking why can't we see the Tie Fighters in the reflection of this water? Right. I would like to make a call out. I don't think that's water. That looks like it could be a planet. The bottom looks very different from the top. I don't know that it's actually. It maybe not be actually on water. What do you think about? Uh, this particular scene, do you think that's actually a water reflection or do you think it's actually um, just a, like a space here in a space kind of an asteroid thing? Yeah, it doesn't look like a water reflection to me. I mean, it looks like uh, if it is, it's highly distorted, which might be why maybe the TIE fighters uh, reflection is off camera behind you or something yeah. along those lines from that perspective. But it doesn't look like the same the same thing. So I agree with you. I don't think it's, I think it's some sort of a strange, you know, world or planet or something. I don't know. Yeah. Now, overall, this movie, uh, we can't tell from some of these shots here that if it's actually going to be <laughs> iceberg to hit the Titanic is what Deshaun just kind of popped up. But uh, we have like Snoke's chair. You have uh, all the different fighters and you have the Millennium Falcon all that good stuff. Are you, do you know much about this movie so far? Uh, Scott, have you really looked into it? No. Uh, it, well, I mean, I've watched the trailers. I've, uh, you know, seen all the movies I've seen all of them in theaters, uh, including the original one, which is kind of fun. Yeah. Uh, so I'll definitely be going to see this one. One thing that's interesting here is that if we look way back when a new hope, right? Yeah. 121 minutes. This movie is a full 34 minutes longer, half an hour longer than the original Star Wars. So, um, you know, it's a it's an hour and 35 minutes or two hours and 35 minutes long. That is a really long movie. And considering that a lot of people really complained after The Last Jedi because it was an hour and 52 minutes long. So this is longer than that one one would think that uh, they would have maybe shrunk it down a little bit. But I think the bigger complaint wasn't that it was an hour and 52 minutes long or uh, two hours and 52 minutes long um, on the last one, but it seemed like 300 minutes because it kind of moved really slow in the middle and that sort of thing. And, and then the whole, the whole gambling or casino uh, city was sort of a, 
a weird side track that maybe didn't need to happen and that sort of thing. So I don't know. We'll see uh, this one. My guess is that even though this one is longer uh, by, by three minutes than the last one, it won't seem as long because I'm guessing this one's going to go a little bit faster. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I definitely think it will. And one thing I got to say is, so the last one you had a ship chasing a ship that was like the whole movie i think they went and tried to show that hey we're not just a ship fighting a ship if you look here you actually have the entire empire looking fleet that looks i mean just awesome here uh, they look huge they look like they are ready to go to war and to beat down but then again you also have this particular scene here that says hey we're the rebellion we're also ready to go to war and we're massive so instead of having one ship and one ship, I think you're actually going to have a battle, like an actual big battle that we've been waiting for. You know, yep. last, I feel like we got gypped. We didn't get that battle. You know, we, we just got a little piece of it. We just got a little piece of, hey, we're doing a, a old style car chase and it's not even going to be that interesting. You know, it was literally like watching a car chase from the very first movie that decided they wanted to make a car chase. It was just <laughs> slow, boring and didn't go anywhere. <laughs> uh, right. So, go ahead. Well, the you know the interesting thing here is that the name of it is sort of maybe sort of telling, right? At the end of the last one, um, Luke Skywalker sort of disappears. Did yeah. he die? I don't know. Nobody kind of knows, right? He just disappeared all of a sudden. His he was gone. His clothes were there, and he seemed to turn to uh, you know to vaporize somehow. Not sure how all that worked. Yeah. This one, the rise of Skywalker. I think the trailers did a good job of not really giving away why they're calling it that but yeah. there's a ton of speculation out there what does it actually mean is luke skywalker going to return as the master jedi to end all master jedis with his apprentice to really bring balance to uh the universe and i, I don't know you know exactly what that means but um you know, I'm really anxious to find out. And so that's why I'll be seeing that in theaters. And yeah, and, and yeah, absolutely. I think uh, the biggest thing for me is I'm curious. I, I think Ray, it might be like Skywalker's child or something, something crazy like that. Or like somehow they're related and she's a Skywalker or something. I, I just, yeah. I feel like that's going to be where it's going to come from. But Alex, yeah. oh, go ahead. I would say originally, I thought that too, after the last movie, uh, I sort of stopped thinking that, um, but you just never know. I don't, I don't know. Yeah. Oh yeah. Now we have somebody on here who has a very, very different opinion on this movie and I would like to hear it. So Alex, what, what do you think about this movie? So firstly, just to set the precedence of, of everything I think about this movie, uh, when they first released the first trailer, um, at some sort of star Wars event that they had, um, the very first showing of the trailer, um, they misspelled the word Skywalker and it actually said Skywalker. Um, I just felt like I needed to point that out because, you know, <laughs> um, yeah. but what I think is going to happen is, so first off Palpatine's in it, you can hear his voice multiple times and they basically go and show a half a Death Star that's landed on some planet, even though the Death Star was completely annihilated. Yeah. Um, and basically... Um, they've ruined the entirety of episode six by doing that since Luke was supposed to have, you know, had a hand in killing the emperor as well as stopping the empire almost entirely by doing that or at least severely hampering them. Yeah. And so that's kind of retcon during, uh, with this so they can bring him back. Um, and then you have Ray who is a horribly powerful person and during some of the trailers, they say we taught them everything we know, but if you look back into episode eight, um, Luke Skywalker gave Ray one and a half lessons and failed at both of them. And <laughs> yeah. then when he vanished, he did die. He did the same thing as uh, Obi-Wan Kenobi did. Um, so he's going to be a Force ghost, um, which puts in another thing. In episode eight, the Force ghost is able to bring down lightning. So what's Luke Skywalker going to be able to do in episode nine? Um, they're gonna have like a like a Lord of the Rings ghost army coming out or something. Yeah. Um, but if you pay kind of close attention to the massive array of star uh, star destroyers that they have for some reason, um, they're not the same star destroyers that Kylo Ren has. 
And so what I think is going to end up happening is um, Ray's going to have some uh, weird visions of her being in the dark side, which is where that really, really weird and kind of pointless lightsaber comes from, from the second uh, trailer. Um, and those visions are going to, like this picture shows right here, they're going to make them work together against the Empire because Kylo wants to be the strongest in the galaxy and uh, Ray and the Rebels want to just survive. So they're going to have to band together and destroy the Emperor in his many thousands of Star Destroyers that he seems to have out of nowhere. Um, I have a couple Because of those. they're not the same Star Destroyers at all. If you um, look back, they're Palpatine's original Star Destroyers from, uh, um, uh, from Episode 4 through 6. Yeah, so um, they did from the action they look like actual star destroyers they don't look yeah those I mean, are like, the original star destroyers from episode four through six which other ends cool. are much much different and have little crosses on the front of them i think so um well, these ones it's completely the different bottom. these ones actually what? have these aren't flat on the bottom um they're actually got a little bit of a of a, a crease to them actually yeah that's the exact star Destroyer from episode, episode six really so Yep. Um, how he's alive, why he's alive, whether they thought that they should bring him back and completely retcon in episode six, I have no idea. Yeah. Um, but, and then they also brought back Lando, which, I mean, I can see them bringing him back, but kind of a little late on that. Um, <laughs> um, so that's my whole take on it. Um, I'm, I think at best it's probably going to be like a three or a four out of ten movie. It's gonna, not going to be very good. Yeah. Uh, but then again, given what Ryan Johnson did to the movie with episode eight. Oh, and you know, it's J.J. Make... that's doing it now. Yeah, I know. Um, he JJ... did episode seven and episode nine. Episode seven was not very good, but it was doable for a Star Wars movie. Yeah, it was um, like episode, episode eight just completely annihilated the name Star Wars and caused um, Solo to be... Um, which no one ever thought they would say a Star Wars movie that lost money overall. Yeah. Um, and JJ is just trying to fix what Ryan Johnson did, um, which I don't think he'll be able to succeed in, but I don't think it's going to be as bad as episode eight. So, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, um, uh, yeah. One thing I think the seventh movie definitely was a safe way to enter back into star Wars, which I think was a smart move. I think it was smart to play it safe with the first one. And then venture out, but uh, episode or uh, episode eight. So seven was good. Eight, they kind of just went off the the cradle. So I'm curious to see if nine can come back and at least redeem a little bit of the Star Wars name. I really, you know what? I'm looking for an okay movie here uh, as far as story and all that stuff goes. I just really want a good, true to Star Wars Star Wars movie that doesn't try to try to try to go too far out and be a Marvel movie. I want it to be Star Wars. I want to see well, those. The thing about episode eight is you take the whole thing with Canto Bite, which is the casino planet they go to. Um, with uh, with Rose and uh, Finn, yeah. Uh, I believe everything that they shot for that is like uh, 20 or 30 minutes of the movie or something like that. Um, you can take every single piece of that out, as well as them going to the the uh, the supremacy, getting on that, getting caught. Take every single piece of that out and just basically take them from the beginning of the movie and then teleport them to the end, and absolutely nothing would change for them. Um, they could have taken that out completely and spent that time actually making the movie good. <laughs> Fair enough. Well, okay, so now let's do this. Let's say um, out of 1 through 10, are you going to watch? I say mine's going to be about a 9. I definitely want to see this in theaters. I'm, I'm excited for it. I love Star Wars, and I want to. I really want to keep hoping that they're going to be – they're coming back. You know, No no more bad movies. We're going to make good ones from here on out. They're still trucking along, so I'm giving it a 9, 9 out of 10. We'll do Dad next. Uh out of ten, one out of ten. Why do you want to? How much do you want to watch it, and why? Well, look. Here's here's the thing. Like I said earlier, I've watched every single Star Wars movie in theaters, with the exception of Solo, uh, including the original one, which I saw in a giant half dome panoramic theater all the way back in the seventies in Southern California. It was awesome, um, and uh, you know, I, I would be remiss. This is a for sure. I must see this in theaters. No question about that. It will be an IMAX if at all possible. And if there's a IMAX 3D version of it, that will be how I, I enjoy this one. Um, and I'll get it on uh, Ultra 4K Blu-ray when it comes out with uh, you know, Dolby Atmos 
just like I have all the other movies because I'll have it in my collection. The interesting thing for me too is that this is the last one in the saga, but it's not going to be, I don't think, the last one, right? We've got series coming out in the Disney Plus uh, service, you know, even before this is released over Christmas, right? So we're going to have uh, some different storylines starting to spin out of this thing. And while this, the main storyline may disappear after this one, uh, the spurs coming off of that storyline are going to continue for, my guess, is decades. Disney's put a lot of money into not just these movies, but into the new Star Wars lands that are available in not one, not two, but three of their theme parks. Uh, they've got a lot of Star Wars merchandise. They paid a huge amount of money to get this franchise. Um, and uh, the new Disney hotel is go you know, has already broken ground. It's underway in Orlando. Uh, and it is a fully themed hotel experience. It's not just go in, check in, here's your room. You know, you take an elevator and you're going to feel like you're blasting off into outer space. There's LED panel walls so that they can make it look like you're taking off and going into outer space. Yeah. Uh, everything they've got, they've, they're sinking just a ton of effort and imagineering and money into the Star Wars franchise as a whole. Mm -hmm. This won't be the last movie, but it may be the last of Saga. Even so, I've got to see it. Uh, I'm hoping for a really good movie. Kind of have to put some of the things Alex was talking about behind you and not think about them. I'm going to go ahead with a 9 out of 10. Yeah, okay. Um, Alex, how about you? Uh, I'm going to lower that slightly, and I'm going to give it probably a, either a 2 or 3 out of 10. I don't want to see it in theaters whatsoever, and I would be lucky to rent it in HD. Um, in I HD. Think that I, like, I like how you said in HD. Like, you know, standard def. All you get is standard. <laughs> Maybe. Well, I was going to say in, yeah, in, in standard, but, you know, I got to be able to actually see what's going on. So, yeah. Um, I think that – and. I, Nobody here is a bigger Star Wars fan than I am, um, and I can say that because I'm wearing a Star Wars T-shirt right now. Um, can, you, can you like point the camera at your T-shirt? <laughs> uh, you wouldn't be able to see it's really, really dark where I'm at. Um, but you know, no one's a bigger Star Wars fan, at least on this in this uh, this little group here, than I am. Um, and I'm pretty sure both of you can attest to that by the amount of Star Wars stuff that I have as well in my house. Um, but I think that Episode Seven. It was overall, once you actually looked to the story and looked at the writing of it, you can realize that episode seven was objectively a poorly written movie. They had an awful lot of conveniences in that movie to make it work. Uh, yeah. I think that episode eight was just a dumpster fire of a movie and one of the worst written movies I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> uh, and I've seen some really, really bad zombie movies, so that's saying a lot. Um, so I think that episode nine... Um, I think that episode eight destroyed the series so badly that it's not going to be a good movie. He'll try to, well, he'll try his best, but I don't it's think it's going to be good enough. It's going to be hard for them to come back. I mean, that that's, that's what this movie is. It's the comeback. Like if they don't do well with this movie, I mean, it could be lights out for, for star Wars. I mean, and I, and I hate to say that cause I love star Wars. I grew up with star Wars. So well, I think they need to take politics out of it. Um, first off, <laughs> uh, they did that in the last two, and that's one of the reasons why everyone hated it so much. They tried to force politics on people. Um, they need to get back to the point of Star Wars, which is making a well written story before making a movie. Um, and I can say that, um, when episode seven was created, um, JJ Abrams wrote episode eight and episode nine. And then Ryan Johnson basically tossed it in the garbage and made his own story. Um, and he also used his first draft for the movie, yeah. which if you ask any writer in existence, you never use your first draft. You always keep writing, you keep revising, and you make it perfect. Yeah. And yeah. he absolutely didn't do that. And because of that, episode nine is going to suffer greatly. Um, we don't know the stakes of any part of the galaxy they're in. We don't know where any of the factions of the galaxy belong. We don't know if um, Jabba the Hutt might have had, or not Jabba the Hutt, um, like the Hutt clan as a, as a whole might have survived or anything, which they probably could have. Um, we yeah. don't know anything about the Republic. We know that they got blown up, but 
if you're telling me that the entirety of the Republic was on five planets, and that is a terribly run Republic, um, the Resistance had about 20 people, and from the looks of this movie, they managed to grow by about 3,000 times and have themselves a small fleet. Um, the Empire, or the First Order, or whatever they're going to be, um, went from you know a few dozen ships and the Supremacy to suddenly having thousands and, of ships and tens, maybe even hundreds of millions of troops. Um, so we don't know what resources anybody has. Yeah. And no matter how much you blow, you blew up of the galaxy, they seem to come back with more resources. Yeah. So I think that just because of those alone, without knowing anything that's going on in that galaxy, I think that it's going to be a bad movie overall. Yeah. No, I, I, I don't a hundred percent disagree with that. Now, one thing I do want to say is all you commenters out there. I see, uh, we got Oscar and Deshaun out there still. Um, let us know what's your one through 10. Are you going to one being, I'm not going to watch this movie 10 saying I will be there before it launches camping out. Let us know how, what, what you're going to be. And I'll come back to that in, in a few. Um, but yeah, so you got some varying opinions from both from all three of us, really. Um, one diving all the way in one kind of in the middle, but really, you know, going to see it. And then one definitely on the other side of that. Uh, so who do you guys relate with more on that? Like, do you care? Do you not care? Let us know. So now, Go ahead. Well, I think yeah. Oscar relates to uh, to Alex the most uh, when uh, oops, that's not the one I wanted. It moved uh, when he says uh, he misses Scooby Doo. I think <laughs> Alex can. I think Alex can uh, appreciate that one because he uh, grew up with Scooby Doo as well. I think they should bring the mystery machine in on the uh, Star Destroyers. <laughs> uh, but no, Oscar does say he might watch it, uh, so it'll be interesting. Uh, you know, I'll be, I'll be very curious to see how many, you know, what their box office is. Um, I kind of with you, Alex, I don't think it's going to be the, uh, record breaking box office smash that they've had in the past. Um, they'll still, but, they'll still make a billion dollars because it's Disney and, uh, Disney yeah. can throw out a pile of poo like episode eight and still make a billion dollars off of it. So <laughs> exactly, exactly. Uh, so yeah, we've got people kind of all over the board here. It looks like, uh, you know, Harry, Harry Potter. Potter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So we've got, you know, uh, pink piggies, Mrs. Harry Potter. Yep. Although JK Rowling has, uh, some new stuff coming out too. So that's not, that's not a bad thing. Uh, <laughs> I'm just reading some of the comments coming in. Um, but yes, so with that being said, we are going to do something a little bit different. So the first segment we had, if you guys missed it, was uh, was called uh, Leak of the Week, where we talked about a few of the weeks. Now, moving on to the second segment that we have that I decided to make honorable mentions. This is pre past, present.